Saturday, Saturday it is. And we want to thank God for this uh, week and the grace of God has been sufficient for all of us. And I want to remind us by God's grace that even as we talk about Saturday, this is a, a remembrance and a memory of the goodness of the Lord because the Lord has been good. The Lord has been gracious. The entire week from Sunday to Saturday, it is just a sign of God's goodness and mercy. Now, brethren, I just want us to push it further on issues the law of the Holy Spirit. Now, we have been able to pick several laws, but today I just want us to think about that uh, the Holy Spirit was given to us to be our helper. We also said he came to help us and through helping us to remind us of what we have learned from God, what is written in the scriptures. He to remind us of the attributes of God and who God is to us, but also to give us counsel, to guide us in the ways of wisdom and even the ways of righteousness. But also we also rem are reminded that the, the one of us of the whole all of the Holy Spirit also is to become the source of liberation to us, a source of wisdom to us, and a source of power. That we may be able by God's grace, not only men and women who do not understand and live in darkness, but God can reveal to us hidden things in the issues heavenry and in the mysteriousness of the kingdom. And he can be able to guide and counsel us on how to go about them even when they come to us. And also, that notwithstanding, that is able to give us wisdom on how to answer to issues. Because he is a God of wisdom. Because he in him, he has every knowledge, understanding of everything. But also you are reminded we don't need to live in fear. Because he is the source of power. And by the way, by his power, we are able to come strongly and courageous to be witnesses of his kingdom in all times. Allow me now to come to a cross by talking about today that the law of the Holy Spirit also is to sanctify and enables believers to bear good fruits in their lives, to sanctify. You remember Jesus giving an example in the book of John chapter 15, and he said about the good, the, 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 the good vine and the gardener. And one of the things that he mentioned, he said, and the gardener is able every time to prune those branches that do not bear fruit so that that he can clean them so that they can bear even more. In other words, removing the circus, things that take our strength that are meaningless, that they do not add value to our lives. And amazingly, I have learned by the grace of God, but God is able through the Holy Spirit to cut and remove the circus from our lives. Those things sometimes that we love and we enjoy and they are pressurous, but those things amazingly, they don't add any value to our lives. God is able, sometimes it might be places that you love going, but those places never in any way add any value. They are a waste of time and even they are, they are places that expose you even to fall into evil and to sin. God is able to remove suckers of many things and many words that you talk. God is able to remove the suckers of lies, things that defile you. The Lord is able to remove suckers of anger. Sometimes you become a person who is hot-tempered and every time you get angry, you fall into sin. The Holy Spirit is able to continue cutting those suckers from our lives to clean us through and through. That we may become men and women that are able to bear good fruits in our lives. Because Jesus said, when he cleans and is able to prune the vine, it is able to produce even more. The desire of God, my brother and sister, is that we may be able to bear more. And allow me, just allow me just to read a verse which at least uh, we'll be able, and I want to share to you, in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 21, the Bible talks about the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit, and is able to analyze the fruit of the Spirit, and also is able to say about the fruit of the flesh. And amazingly, the desire of God that every fruit of the flesh may be any kind of wickedness, may be any man as they are recorded in the book of Galatians, that are able to be pruned from our lives. When they are pruned, by the way, brethren, we are able by God's grace to find that which is, either, which is important. And you remember, so that we may be able to bear in return the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and again as such, there is no law. You know, brethren, I want to remind us that for us to be able to get to a place of bearing fruits, and that fruit of the Spirit, 
which is all those things that I've mentioned, we must accept that the Holy Spirit must, in his own way, cleanse us, clean us, and is able to prune us. Is there anything that you feel that have always become a source of your defilement? That every time when you're walking with God, you find every time you fall back into filthiness. Is it the way, the kind of the friends that you have kept? My brother and sister, may the Holy Spirit reveal to you the friends that you need to prune. Is it maybe the things that you do even in secret or even in public? Is it because of the ego that you carry? And every time you find yourself because of the ego, you want to pretend who you are not. And therefore you are living a life of lie. Do you know nowadays there are people who live fake lives? They fake who they are. I have heard sometimes the young people say that fake it until it becomes real. And sometimes you realize people live with a lot of lies. They live lies that are not true. It is good to prune it. It's important to understand. Live within your means. Be who you are. It is simple. I've realized the greatest freedom you can ever have in this life is to live who you are. Just accepting who you are. Accept what you have. Live within the means that you are able. You don't need to go coppering everybody and living with debt and learning from everyone. Just leave. Leave the means and even within your, your, even your, your, your boundaries. And you will enjoy a good life. Prune every, every desire of living another life that is not yours. Also prune, by the way, any manner of sin or addiction of evil. Prune it. And how can you do it? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is, it was promised that we will be able to come and clean, clean our lives, prune our lives, that we may be able to bear good fruits, love, kindness. All those things that have been mentioned, even self-control, forbearance, and all these fruit of the Spirit that have been mentioned in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22, and following will be our portion. And now, my, my brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you as you continue to appropriate the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and more so knowing that the Holy Spirit will be able to help us to become like our God. We'll be able to connect ourselves with God, and therefore, He will be able to reveal all the hidden things about the things we need to note in our lives. And not only that, He will be our Prakratos. He will be our helper, our source of wisdom, our source of understanding, our source of revelation, our source of power, and finally, brethren, he will be able to prepare us as a bride, well prepared for the groom, for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, by his grace, fill you with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that you may become relevant and be able to pick up to become a great and a reliable, even witness of the kingdom, an ambassador of Jesus Christ, wherever you be in life. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.